In this video, uh, we're going to take a look at how to include custom components and directives uh, in an Ionic application. Uh, so of course, we have a lot of uh, components that Ionic provides for us uh, by default. Uh, but at some point, we may want to include our own custom components that we create, or perhaps we want to include components that others have created into our application. Uh, but there's a few things we need to be aware of when we are doing that. Uh, it's not as easy as just importing the component and having it uh, available. Uh, so what we're going to do is just run through an example of um, we're going to generate our own components and directives, and then we're going to talk about some ways that you can set those up in an application. So I'm just going to expand the source folder now. Um, right now we don't have any uh, custom components or directives uh, defined in here. Uh, so what we're going to do is generate some using the uh, command line uh, interface for Ionic. And then we're going to look at how to set those up properly. So if I want to create my own custom component, I can just run Ion Ionic G component and then the name of the component. So we'll just call this test, uh, test one. And then once that has uh, finished running, you would have seen over here, we have a components folder now, and we have that test one uh, component in here. And I could do the same for a, a directive as well. Uh, I just need to run Ionic G directive, and we'll do test two. And that's going to generate the directive for us, and it will add it to a directives folder. And again, we can see the directive uh, in this folder now. So since this component here has a selector of test one, that means that we're going to be able to use it uh, in an application like uh, this. I can just add the uh, test one uh, tag, and that's going to inject that component there. Uh, but before that works, we'll need to actually set it up. And so the most obvious way to do that is to add it to our main module file. As you can see, this is where you know, we declare other things uh, in the application. We declare our components, like our homepage here. We set up our providers and any other uh, modules that we're importing into the application. And so we can also just set that component up as a declaration here. So all I'd need to do is import that. So I can import test one component from components, test one, test one. And so that's going to set that up uh, as a declaration here, and that's going to make that available uh, in the application. So if I had test one component as a declaration, I will now be able to use that uh, in this homepage template. And I could do the same with the directive. I could import it, set it up as a declaration, and we'd be able to use the directive. Uh, but there are some uh, issues with this. And one uh, issue that you'll likely quickly run into is if you're using a lazy loaded page. So by default, this home page isn't lazy loaded right now. Uh, but if I generate a new page, so run Ionic G page, uh, we'll just call this one second. Uh, you'll see that this is generated as a lazy loaded page. So we have our, our pages module here, and we can see we have the Ionic page decorator set up. So this is going to be lazy loaded. And so since it's a lazy loaded uh, module, it has its own, uh, or rather since it's a lazy loaded page, it has its own module. And you can see here it's got its own uh, declarations and imports defined in its own ng module. So this is just like our, our root ng module we have here, uh, except this lazy loaded page has its own module. Uh, but the problem with this is that uh, if we add a declaration in our main module here, uh, we've set up test one component, we aren't going to be able to access that in our lazy loaded page. So if we were to attempt to write uh, test one in our lazy loaded page here, even though it's being imported and set up in our root module, it's not going to work. So naturally, where you might go from there is to think, well, you know, since we added it to our root module here, all we need to do is then also declare that same component in our uh, module for the lazy loaded page. Uh, but you cannot declare uh, a component more than once. It can only belong in one declarations field in a single ng module. So now we're in a bit of an awkward situation where we can only import our component into one page here. We can either have it available for the home page or we could have it available in our lazy loaded page here, uh, but we can't have it in both. And the reason for that is that limitation that we can't declare it twice. And so the solution for this is to create something called a shared module. And this is actually what Ionic does by default for us. It creates a single shared uh, components module and a single shared directives module. And the purpose of this module is to declare all of our components, and then we can import that module into uh, wherever we want to use it. So rather than uh, adding the component directly as a declaration here, I'd remove that, and I'd instead import the components module. And that would be imported from 
components forward slash components dot module. And then we would add that as uh, an import. And uh, sorry, that should say import, not imports up the top there. So we're no longer declaring that uh, a single component. We've created a module that, imp uh, that declares the component for us. And then we import that module into our main module. And the benefit of doing this is that we can also import it into our lazy loaded uh, module here as well. So we do the same thing. We'd import the components module and add it as an import. And we're allowed to do this. We're allowed to import a module in multiple places. We can't uh, declare something in multiple places, but we can import other modules. So the way this works by default is that any component that we generate with the command line uh, interface is going to be added to this single shared uh, ng module. So just to show you that, if I again run ionic g component, let's we'll call this one another, uh, we can see that the another component uh, was dropped in there. Uh, but we can also see that this components.module file has been updated to also include uh, that new component that we just added. So now anywhere that we are importing this components module, we'll also be able to access uh, another component now. So we'll be able to access both of these. And so now we can just import this module wherever we want to use the components. We can import it as many times as we need in as many different pages as we need, and we'll be able to access all of our custom components. And so this is the way that it works by default. Um, this is a kind of nice, easy, convenient way to manage your components. Uh, it just makes everything sort of avail available everywhere. Uh, but there are some downsides to that in that, you know, you might not want to import every single component into a page. You might just want to use one. And so uh, the downside of this approach is that we're including everything in one giant uh, module. So there are other approaches you could use as well, uh, rather than having a single a shared components module, you could have a separate module for every component and directive. So rather than having a components.module.ts, we might have a uh, another.module.ts and test1.module.ts, which just declares a single component, and then you import that. And another more perhaps manageable and maintainable way to do it is to create multiple shared modules. And uh, you kind of group related components and directives into a single module. Uh, so that you're only ever importing uh, a bunch of things where you need to use them. Uh, but that approach can be a little bit harder to uh, figure out because you need to determine you know, which, which modules to group together so that you can best import them into your application. Uh, but I think this, uh, this approach here is good for most applications probably, as long as you don't have uh, you know, tons and tons of components. Uh, if you just have a few custom components you want to import and make available in your application, I think this is a good approach just to have that single shared components uh, module and a single shared directives module and then just import that wherever you need it. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.